Hi everyone, it is Sunday, it's May 31st, 2020, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a devotion for you today, but first, as I always do, I like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Father. I love you so much. <laughs> All right, this is Psalm 74, verses 1 through 8, and it's called a plea for relief from oppressors. And it says, God, why have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smoke against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old. The tribe of your inheritance which you have redeemed. This Mount Zion, where you have dwelt, lift up your feet to the perpetual desolations. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. Your enemies roar in the midst of your meeting place. They set up their banners for signs. They seem like men who lift up axes among the thick trees and now they break down its carved work all at once with axes and hammers they have set fire to your sanctuary they have defiled the dwelling place of your name to the ground they said in their hearts let us destroy them all together they have burned up all the meeting places of God in the land all glory to God, play, praise Jesus, hallelujah, and thank you, Holy Spirit. This psalm was written in the midst of great suffering, just like the world is suffering now. Jerusalem had experienced devastation and the temple had been destroyed. This could be a reference to the destruction that's unleashed by Nebuchadnezzar. The chaos had caused the psalmist to cry out to God with the question, why have you cast us off forever? As the psalm progresses, it becomes clear that he actually possessed hope of a recovery. Two very sobering truths come from these verses. First, God chastens his people. The reality of God punishing his people is often ignored and despised by Christians today. And you'll see that everywhere because they, don't, they believe that once they're saved, they don't get punished anymore for sins. But this, this couldn't be furthest from the truth. Uh, God is long-suffering and he's slow to anger. But he does discipline his people. We get angry with God and we complain about our circumstances. However, often our own disobedience is the cause. God chastens because he loves us and he desires us to return to fellowship with him. We see the world now writhing in agony. All the, this pandemic, whether it's planned or whether it isn't planned, it's still God has permitted it to happen in these end days. And everybody around the globe is feeling the suffering and the ramifications of this, uh, this pandemic. And now, since they have said that they may loosen things up, now we have riots. And the riots will lead to chaos. And the chaos is going to bring military force, which is martial law. This is the fulfillment of the new world order in the end times in the Bible, people. This is prophecy unfolding. You have to wake up and see this truth for what it is. 
the times are not going to improve. They're going to progressively get worse. And this, this is punishment. This is punishment that is allowed by God, allowing Satan to rise up and ravage. This is not the wrath of God. This is Satan's wrath because he knows that he has just a short time to sequester this world and, and, and commence his, his one world order. Okay? This is a spiritual battle that we're in. And you have to understand one thing. We play a part in this spiritual battle, and that is our obedience. And the reason you see this worldwide lash is because of how we've strayed from God. How we've, how we've um, absorbed so many excesses in life. Excess of food. Uh, uh, co you, you, you saw it accelerating, didn't you? People were just going out to eat. In the past, going out to eat was, was something that you rewarded yourself with. But in the last days, we were going out to eat all the time. And um, you couldn't control the content of the food. They were blowing us up with all kinds of hydrogenated fats and, and stuff like that. And the, the commercials, the brainwashing and the food network and all of this to blow us up. And then leads to diabetes and heart disease and all of that. And then the, the system punished us after they gave it to us and saying that we didn't control our flesh. And now they have to overpay for, for, for our bad choices. You see the circle jerk here? It's an impossible equation. Satan feeds the flesh and then he blames you for giving into the flesh and punishes you for it. Our response to discipline must be repentance and surrender to God's will. God's will is the only thing that can get you out of the suffering and the addictions. Okay, because uh, as the decades have rolled by, Satan used the media, he used fashion, he used Hollywood, he used every single industry in the world to lead people with their flesh. And now we suffer the consequences. Second, to be out of fellowship with God. You can't be living that kind of lifestyle and have a personal intimate relationship with the Lord. It's just not possible because you can't serve two masters. If you're in the flesh and you're constantly feeding and rewarding the flesh, you're not worshiping God. You just, just, that's a fact, people. God and our Holy Spirit cannot dwell in the same vessel together. They cannot. They cannot. That's why our Lord evacuated the Garden of Eden when sin entered, because he's holy. Second, to be out of fellowship with God and under his discipline is terrifying it certainly is i've been under the the the, uh, the chastisement of our lord and savior many times anyway this is not about my punishment that i've endured but i'm just telling you as a witness this this sentence is absolutely correct the writer of hebrews calls it painful The truth revealed in the psalm is a reminder to be obedient and to have a healthy, reverential fear of God. Without fear, you're never going to get in line. If you're raising children, if they don't look up to you as a disciplinarian parent, they will run roughshod over you. And eventually, you'll be the child and they'll be telling you what to do. And I've seen that in many households. This is certainly not popular teaching in our day, but it is true and beneficial. The best place to live is dead center of our Lord's will. Absolutely, absolutely 100% truth. 
And people in these days that we are living in right now, the terror, we have not seen the beginning of it yet. We are just touching the surface of what's coming. And if you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ dwelling inside you through his Holy Spirit, you're not going to endure. You will not be able to endure. You will not have the Lord's peace. You will fall apart. You will, you will explode from anxiety and terror. You will not get through it. And if you die in your sins, you will not see heaven. I'm going to encourage you to follow along on the video that is going to follow this one. I'm going to attach it. It's a prayer. And I want you to follow along on that prayer. And I want you to make a confession to Jesus Christ. I want you to repent for the life that you've lived. That you have lived a life according to this world and according to your own desires and according to the flesh. Whatever you wanted, you, uh, you, you got it for yourself. And it even if it was not for your best interest. These are the things that you have to confess. When you give your life to the Lord, he now makes the decisions for you. He will send his Holy Spirit and guide you which is the best path for you to take. You cannot do it on your own. You cannot. You will not survive it, people. And it's going to get a lot worse. Believe me, I'm saying this for your own good. Just look around. The chaos is rising. That's evil. Evil is rising. The world is being a coup d'etat of this whole world by the elite, by the secret societies. They're taking over. And what we're experiencing is a, is a slow asphyxiation of our freedom. A little at a time, it's being withdrawn brainwashing to get used to the discipline of the tyrannical communist system that's just around the corner if you don't wake up people this is going to be a terrible shock and hopefully it won't be too late because you'll be watching this video and you'll have a chance to make it right with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ don't forget, he died on that cross. He paid the price to cleanse you from your sins. But you have to have humility, people. You have to have a contrite heart. Lip service doesn't fly. You're either going to serve Satan, who's running this world right now, but will not run it forever. Or you're going to turn your life over to Jesus and let him give it a shot. Okay, I always want to remind you that I love you and Jesus loves you and to never forget how much Jesus loves you. Never forget it, people. Never, ever forget it. I want to bless you in Jesus' holy, holy name. Don't click off. Follow the video. Give your open heart. Go to your knees. Make a confession. Get right with the Lord, no matter how terrible your life has been. There's no shame. There's nothing you could have done that the Lord would make you ashamed of. Okay? He would be proud of you. If you can humble yourself and go to your knees and repent. Don't wait any longer. Do it now. God bless you and have a beautiful day in the Lord.